whiskey friends far and wide we are l-i-v-e live it is tasty tuesday it's happy hour i'm eric your humble mom user what is good everybody great to see folks jumping in the house we got a fun happy hour tonight i got a much anticipated whiskey that we're going to check out here um hope y'all are doing well um here in my humble hometown of Chicago, Illinois, we are anticipating quite a huge winter storm. Surprise, surprise. So I'm glad I got some good whiskey with me. I hope things are safe and good around y'all. And let's hop in, say hello to the folks who have ponied up here You're at the virtual bar. Already getting things started. We got eight folks in, which is awesome. What's up? First in the door tonight, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. It's Paul. How you doing, Paul M? What's good? a glass to you sir nice to see you northern california it's donner pass whiskey what's up buddy nice to see you sir great to have you here jupiter florida and gerbic is in the house just watched the first bracket of the rye tournament very cool oh great yeah excellent yeah i'll uh talk a little bit about that tonight as well and he's got some amaroot fusion in the glass excellent choice you can't go wrong with that one that's one of my favorites actually Hmm. I got to get around to posting a review of that sooner than later. Suburbs of Hotlanta, Georgia. Maybe not so hot these days. IC86, what up? Going to catch up on the rye flights. Right on. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. You might like it. Quad Cities, Chris. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you, sir. Northern Ireland's in the house. It's Whiskey Straight Al. Hey, Al. What's good, buddy? Raise a glass to you on the other side of the pond. Hope your uh, evening is going well, man. Great to see you. East Texas, it's Daniel. What up? Yo, yo. How you doing? SoCal in the house. A jubilant one, I would assume. It's Cohen. Greetings to you all in the mob users. What up, Cohen? Rams, Rams, Rams. Yeah, how about it? Matthew Stafford on the knocking on the door of a Super Bowl ring, man. Congrats. And they'll be playing on home turf. Should be fun. Ontario, it's Peter White. Snow coming again in Ontario. Yeah, that's probably the same thing coming our way, man. Indeed. Leo's in the house. Let me make sure I get this right. You are in Arizona? Might be wrong about that. Let me know, man. I apologize if I am. Daniel... Stafford and his decision made. Scotch Comic, how you doing? Good to see Scotch Comic here. 31 Days of Sobriety just ended. So what better way than my first jam with y'all? Fine, folks. Hey, cheers. I'll raise a glass to that. The dry January? Good stuff. Hope that uh, seems like you survived all right, at least. That's good news. (laughs) We got some football chatter. All right, yeah, Leo, you are. Okay, Phoenix, Valley of the Sun. All right. Hmm. All right, well, finished off that glass for you, Scotch comic. We've got 12 folks in. What's good, everybody? Here's what we got going on tonight. First and foremost, um, if you didn't see it, the One Rye to Rule Them All 20 Rye Whiskey Blind Tasting Challenge is off and running. Uh, The first bracket posted a couple days ago. Uh, Bracket two will be tomorrow. Um, Three and four will be coming in the next week. And then, so one whiskey, there's five in each bracket. One each is going to go to a final four. That video will post uh, probably less than two weeks from now. So a little extra content coming y'all's way. I hope you enjoy it. I do want to say thanks again to the folks who chipped in with Super Chats, with Patreon support to uh, help expand that to 20 whiskeys and uh, uh, make sure I included as many good ones as possible. I thought I had a really nice uh, uh, assortment of stuff to try. Nothing too cheap, nothing too expensive. So hope you guys enjoy it. And um, yeah, keep an eye out tomorrow uh, Tomorrow evening. Bracket 2 will post. So looking forward to that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine, bro. Well, hopefully tonight we can, um, you know, help rest your mind a little bit and uh, bring back a little balance. I have a whiskey here that I'm going to crack open and and, uh, uncork and taste with y'all tonight. And this is something I have been waiting a while for. I really, really wanted 
this whiskey before Christmas last year. Unfortunately, I could not find it anywhere. But I got it now, and it is from India, the Paul John. This is the Christmas edition 2021 single malt. I'm going to get this thing uncorked right now. Get this resting in a nice, fresh, clean Glencairn. Get this thing uh, some oxygen. And we'll chat a little bit about Paul John, Indian whiskey, the Christmas editions, so on and so forth. Let me know in the chat, are any of y'all fans of Paul John whiskey? Have you had this one? Have you had any of the other Christmas editions? Are there any others in general, whiskeys from India, that you will recommend? I will say I have a few few new ones coming my way relatively soon, which I will share with you all next week. I'm increasingly uh, finding that this year is going to be a lot more world whiskey in the... Um, in the channel. So you'll be seeing a lot more World Whiskey reviews this year. All right, here we go. I'm going to get that in the glass, that rest. And we got 14 folks in, which is awesome, man. Great to see everybody on a tasty Tuesday, as usual. Uh, 31 days of sobriety. God, I need a drink. Yeah. Well, you were doing it too, Daniel? That doesn't. Mm. Cohen says, car is coming. To the Packers for Rodgers and some pick. Carr wants to play with Devontae and the Packers would not be in trouble. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen with that. We will see. They're going to be a different team without him. I don't think Lightning's going to strike three times and uh, Jordan Love is the uh, is the next Rodgers, Brett Favre, but we'll see. You never know. You never know. Not had that one. PJ does good stuff. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, never had Paul John. It's on the list to try. Yeah, well, if folks want to recommend some uh, Paul John whiskeys to folks. Great time to do it in the chat. So let me give you a little bit of... Uh, I'd like to pull the trigger on the Paul John Mathuna, but it's... Yeah, I've seen that one too. There's a lot. So basically, we're just going to chat a little bit about it. So in the Indian whiskey world, there's two big distilleries that I recommend looking at. Paul John being one, the other is Amroot. Um, there are some kind of widely available ones here in the U.S. Uh, I think, who is it? Mr. Gerbic that was drinking it? Uh, the Paul John Fusion. Oh, I'm sorry. The Amroot Fusion is an excellent start starter for folks who are want to get into it. It's got a bit of Scotch barley. It's got a bit of uh, Indian barley in it. Um that's a really good one. In the Paul John world, there's there's a lot of different stuff. So there's the Paul John Brilliance, which is probably the best non-peated one they do. Um, they also have a peated line, um, or peated whiskey. There's one called the Paul John Bold. I think I have a review posted up back then um, a couple months ago. If you want to check that out, really good stuff, 46% non-chill filtered. Paul John is doing a lot of exciting stuff, as is Amroot. Um, so those are those are a few I would recommend trying if you wanted to dip your toe in the water. Even the regular Amroot is okay. Um, the thing with the Indian whiskeys is is really more than anything. What you're looking at is is a situation um, where a lot you're not going to see a lot of age statements, and this has a lot to do with climate and elevation. So it's similar to like the Cavalans to some degree. They're younger. But because of the climate, they're aging in a different, uh, they're aging more quickly. There's also an elevation issue uh, where they lose a lot of their whiskey to uh, evaporation in some cases, particularly with Amroot. Um, so you end up with a situation where, uh, you know, some of their stuff might be a little pricier because they're losing a, a hefty amount of it. Um, I think they said something upwards of like, like 8 to 10% a year, which seems high, but um, maybe somebody can confirm that. Five, maybe between five and ten. I knew it was it was an alarming number. Anyways, one of the things I've been really into about with Paul John whiskeys of late has been these Christmas editions. So they started doing these back in 2018. They did not release the 2018 here in the States, but they do have the 19 and 20. I did do a review of the 19 and 20 a few weeks ago. If you caught it, or if you saw my best whiskeys of 2021, you will know that the Paul John Christmas Edition 2020, which had virgin oak, sherry, and uh, bourbon cask, was very highly rated for me and was my runner-up for World Whiskey of the Year. The 2019, which is a PX, pretty good, just not quite as interesting. So we got ourselves here at 2021. And this is what's going on with the 2021. So again, these run in right around that like $80 mark. So they're not 
you know, crazy expensive for all these maturations, but not cheap either for say. Um, this 2021 is, it's a single malt, of course. It's X bourbon with a melange of port and Madeira finish. Non-chill filtered, 46% ABV, all good stuff. I am assuming this probably has a bit of peated malt in it. They, the last one did. Um, let's take a look here. So with tawny tints and aromas of malted tinged caramel, blah, 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 X bourbon, port, Madeira. So maybe tawny port? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't say anything about peat. So maybe they don't have any peat in this one. There was a little bit of peat in the 2020, which I really, really liked. Um, they also don't mention anything about color on these. So there's a possibility that they are adding color to these whiskeys. Now, these are not scotch whiskeys, so they can kind of do what the hell they want with them. You'll find out that, especially if you look at like the Amrude Spectrum, um, where they are using staves from all sorts of different stuff. They have a lot more... Uh, freedom to do what they want with their whiskeys. Anyways, uh, so yeah, this is the fourth edition, third one that's been out in the U.S. This is batch one, 46%, non-chill filtered, bourbon, Madeira, port. There you go. So that's the tail of the tape here on the Paul John Christmas edition 2021. Just for context sake, again, we don't know for sure if this has fake color in it or not. We should just assume that they do add some color, but I don't know. That's the color we're looking at. Kind of nice. And I will let this get a little more oxygen before I jump into this. I didn't do the 30 days of sobriety. Yeah, I had a feeling you didn't. <laughs> Silverlock, what's up, man? You betting him down the hatches for this storm coming through? Greetings from one side of Chicago to the other. Some more football takes. Uh, what was the Atma? Um, that one was port, but they have more than one. I think it was like 50 some percent ABV. Good to see you, man. Colin's calling it 27-20 Rams win. All right, let's see. Should be a good game. 10% Angel share. Okay, yeah, it is. It, yeah, I remember it was like strikingly high. Top shelf. What up, D? How are you, man? Bengals fan? You've got a nice, uh, if so, must be pretty exciting times in your neck of the woods. I'm not sure if you're right over there on that side of the state or not, but hope you're doing well, man. Nice to see you. KNL has two cast root and root picks that are like the color of Cavalans, Oloroso, Port. Wow. Okay. Am root, Naranji is aged with oranges barrels. So pretty good. I haven't had that one, but I've seen that one too. Yeah. Super Bowl must be one by three points. All right. Demand to reply. There we go. Cheers. All right. So, um, as I mentioned, I've been really excited about this. I really wanted to get my hands on this bottle before, uh, before Christmas last year, unfortunately, did not see him anywhere in the States. And then lo and behold, three weeks later, I ran into it. So here we go. On the nose. Hmm. So the first thing I'm noticing here, this one smells a lot younger getting some of that minerality, that kind of wet concrete note, which I tend to associate with young, youthful spirit. And I'm actually getting quite a bit of it here. It's dominating the nose, actually. Ooh, not a great start. Behind it, Madeira, the Madeira notes. Again, Madeira, I don't know how do you explain it. A little bit more kind of orange, um, you know, melony a little bit. I am not picking up much in the way of port. All in all, slightly sweet, a little bit abrasive, drying, and spicy. All spice. Maybe even a little bit of a, like, kind of tropical note. Coconut? Hmm. Interesting. It's kind of all over the place. Anyways, well, here we go. Slant, y'all. Happy Taste Tuesday. Mm. Oh, wow. So it does not mention peat on this one. It did mention it on the 2020. And in fact, I have a bottle of the 2019 here, and I wonder if it actually... 
lighter smoke on the palate. So it does refer to some smoke on this one. It says hint of peat. Okay, so this one doesn't say it, but I'll swear it's in here. Mm, let me get another taste. Hmm. Okay, so it doesn't say it. it. Sure tastes like it. This is pretty youthful. Sprightly coconut raisin, ton of raisin, chocolate covered raisin on the palate. You kind of have a, there's a creaminess on the palate, but also a very effervescent kind of youthful quality to it, which makes me think there's some peak because it doesn't taste like sharp wood notes. As it develops, you're getting a bit more of like a chocolate covered cherry. Again, the raisins, fig kind of thing going on. Vanilla. Dark, little slight dark chocolate on the back end. Medium finish. Mm. Huh. Now is where the port's coming in. And, and I do think, now it doesn't tell you what kind of port. They do use the word tawny in the description on the back not associated with port, it just mentions the, what does it say? It says uh, tawny tints and aromas. So maybe they're saying that there's tawny port in there unless they're using that as a as a uh, adjective. I'm gonna just go ahead and say they're not and that this is tawny port because the, there's a bit of a, a sherry note here, but it's drying. It is not like that juicy ruby kind of red fruit stuff that you get with the younger ports. Uh, tawny ports are generally older um casks and you're tasting it a bit here interesting finish there's a lot going on here again which is consistent with with the one from last year but the one from last year i felt was a bit more cohesive this one the nose leaves a lot to be desired but it it does seem to open up and and bring some surprises as it goes on i'm gonna have to sip this a couple more times here does anybody have this one yet Mm. Can very it's hot, spicy. But if you get past the heat, which hopefully water will bring down, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. Again, the barley just has a unique flavor from these guys, and I don't want to I don't want to go too far off the into like weird spice territory that I'm probably out ahead of my skis on. But I, I do get a bit of like a like cardamom rice. I mean, that could be suggestive. I might be exact. I might be wrong about that, but there's something there. The other thing I'm going to mention here is like, if you, if you did pour this for me neat, it almost has a Marsala, Marsala sherry or Marsala wine flavor going on to it. The Madeira and the port together seem to be kind of bringing that flavor to the, to the foreground here. Um, this is quite a roller coaster of a whiskey for sure. Um, which is also a quality I actually quite liked about the 2010. Um, I'm sorry, the 2020. We'll oh. probably a little water on this. Because I like the 2020 so much, I actually don't have any more, but I do have the 19 that we can bring as a point of comparison here. Let's just do three drops. Makers, Mark, Private Select. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go, man. You know, as a as an NFC North, um, well, as my teams are in the NFC North, my team, I should say. I, yeah, I saw a lot of Stafford. I always felt like he was a little better than the team he was on. So it should be interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing him win. But also Cincinnati Midwest team, working class. That also speaks to me. So I don't know. It'll be a good game. Yes, they do. Yeah, and it's like 80 bucks. I'd recommend buying it. It's really good. So water. It is toning down that new make note a bit, which is nice. So now it's more getting like a fresh cut wood. Again, a lot here. A lot here. You've got, again, youthful wood notes. This kind of uh, raisiny, orange almost, uh, Marsala type flavor. 
coming on the nose, warm and like rich, it's simultaneously youthful but rich. This is very cask driven, as you can tell. All right, here we go again. Maybe a little bit of citrus now, too. Lime. Oh, yeah. Okay. Tones down that spice a little bit. Alan's in the house. What's up, buddy? How are you, sir? Happy Taste Tuesday. Again, a bit hot, but a lot of rich cask flavor here. The Madeira is a little lost on me. I'll be honest. I have a, When Madeira is mixed with other things, I have a hard time picking it out. I think it's here coming in the form of that kind of orange flavor a little bit, but the, the tawny port, more of that bit drying, oaky, a lot of nice little popping, different kind of spice notes coming through. I think this is another good one. I'm, I'm, I'm increasingly enjoying this. Um, at first, I, this is going to be one of those bottles that I think, you know, a little bit of time in uh, open is going to take it a long way. There's a lot of good flavor here. If you like a very cask forward spirit, again, my assumption is that the casks are going to be a lot more prominent on this as it gets older, or I'm sorry, as it ate, uh, as it sits open. The nose threw me off youthful, but now, man, I'm getting like a nice malted milk ball note. This finish is extended with the water. Okay. It's not up to the 2021 or the 2020 levels. I, I, that one I think is just special. And I think it was the virgin oak in that, that really tamed down the spirit, uh, the youthfulness of the spirit. You couldn't quite tell. Um, it didn't come through as much. And, and as a result, wasn't quite as as kind of fresh and sprightly as this one is. Okay, before we go with the score, as a point of comparison, I'm going to take this back to the 2019. So we're going to throw this one in. This one says it has a hint of peat. I really want to see if we can pull out the peat note in this because it doesn't say it on this one, but I swear it's there. So this one, again, this was the first one that was put in the U.S. This is, um, uh, again, non-chill filtered 46%. It's just one finish on this, so not two, just one. This is PX and has some peated barley in it. So, again, we don't know if the color is right, real on that or not. So I just want to see what the comparisons are here. Okay, so this, this 2021 does smell younger. Even when you go behind the PX on this, it's a little younger. So it's a good question. I mean, does does you do the youthful notes in a whiskey really um, throw you off? Like, what what what? See, you know, is it is it something that you can pick it up? But if if it's if it's mixed with some nice casks, you still like it, or is that just a non-starter for you? Because I'll tell you right now, this PX smells older, a little bit darker notes, a bit drier notes on the casks on the fruit, rather, of the cask. Here we go. Okay. So this one says Pete. This one says Pete, and I can tell the difference. I don't think this is peated. I think it's just youthful. Because there's a difference here. I thought maybe that effervescent note I was picking up on the on the palette of this 2021 version was potentially peat, and they just didn't mention it. It's not, because the peat on this has a more ashy, smoky quality. I'm not getting that on that. This is just young, younger spirit, and the casks aren't quite uh, masking it, overpowering it, balancing it, however you want to put it. Um, I think this one might be... Hmm. Let me do one more taste of this PX. So for folks who, if you didn't see it, I do have a review up comparing the 2019 and the 2020. My scores on these were, I had a 4.25 for the 2020, which is again, which is a, a virgin oak Oloroso sherry in bourbon cask. It's fantastic. Um, this one, the PX, I had a 3.5. 
So I still think it's an above average whiskey, especially when you're looking at prices on these are sub $100 here in the US. No, they don't have age statements, but again, Indian whiskey is a little bit of a different beast. This 2021, my prelim has fallen into that 325 range. I actually think this is, might be the weakest of the three, but it it's still, I don't know. We'll see. I'm hovering in that 325, 335 range. Hmm. It's funny, Mahir, I don't know if Mahir is here, but um, he was warning me about this 2021 version as not being all that great. Um, I might have to hit him up on Instagram and let him know. Let him know that he might have been right. I mean, it's not bad. I just don't think this is a rush out and buy it. I still think here in the U.S., luckily, as somebody just mentioned, you can get the 2020 version, which, I, again, I really think is fantastic. It was my runner-up for for uh, World Whiskey of the Year, but look, it was going up against the winner, which was the Cavalan Muscatel Solist. I mean, come on, right? You're not going to get your no, – nothing's going to beat that, I don't think. But had that Cavalan not been there – I'm, I'm very high on the 2020 still. Um, this one, it's good. It's interesting. I think it has some upside. It could get better. It, I'm just a little bit taken back by the spiritiness of this. Again, that minerality, that kind of wet, concrete, clay note, um, unfortunately, is coming through in this just a bit too much and and the fact that they don't mention pete on it and now i've compared it to one that they did say they had had a hint of pete i can really tell the difference here i think they went away from the pete on this and maybe should have kept it because i think it would have at least mellowed out that youthful note now thankfully on the back end of this it does get a bit more round a bit more interesting but the nose initially boy it's like you walked into a carpenter's wood shop and, and you know, he's just chop, uh, cutting through some stuff. I mean, it just has that raw wood cedar kind of note coming in with that, again, wet concrete thing. Yeah. Yeah, they maybe slightly missed the mark on this. just a little young three two five sounds about right i'll do a full review of this eventually but i can't put this above the px version i like it ah there's a nice tropical note in some of that stewed plum peach thing coconut it's got all the hallmarks of a really again what you expect out of these paul john christmas editions like it's just got a lot going on it's really showing off and displaying a lot of its casks. Of course, it's displaying its barley. But just a little bit on the youthful side. Um, and I think that's taking away from what could be really good. So if you like Marsala finished whiskeys or aged whiskeys for that matter, um, if you like things a little, little more aggressive and sprightly, check this one out. I mean, it, it's right there. But if you have the chance to get the Christmas edition 2020, that's the... That's the winner. Um, go for that one. Even this 2019, you can still find, again, you can find these anywhere from $70 to $80 here in the U.S. still, which is fantastic. It's a place called Blackwell's, which is selling to 2020 right now for 80 bucks, worth the money. Um, so, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, it's above average, just new, which is a three for me. So I'm going to give it a three, two, five, which, again, you know, on my scale, if you're into the 100-point scale, I mean, that's is like in that 80 283 range maybe probably you know 83 ish it's not bad not great it'll be fun to see where it goes i'll definitely give this some time uh, before we uh before i do a full review but yeah that's that a uh, little bit of a letdown but again I, I i have yet to have a paul john whiskey that i i just found really just not either worth the money or or disappointing so um you know, if these notes sound good to you, check it out. Again, this is the Christmas edition 2021. It comes in a tube like this. And, you know, again, these standard Paul John bottles, not bad. All right, let me catch up on the chat. We got 17 folks in, which is great, man. It's good to see folks. Hey, hey, well, I was speak of the devil. It's my here. Hey, what's up, buddy? I was just talking about you. You probably heard it. Good to see you, man. 
Eric, uh, I have just had 20 massive samples of Texas whiskey. Might need to do a live to dive into them, and I might need some help to show me where to start. Anybody up for it? Sure. I'm into it. Speaking of 20 whiskeys, by the way, if you, um, for folks who are just joining, uh, over the weekend, I dropped bracket one of my 20 blind rye tasting. One rye to rule them all. Uh, bracket two will come out tomorrow. Again, each bracket, there's going to be four. It has five whiskeys. I choose one winner of each. They go to a final four. Um, so bracket two will drop tomorrow. And then uh, over the next week, you'll get the rest of them and then the finals. Top D. I don't do young whiskey when it's obvious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I heard you on that. All right. What else is going on? Y'all Cohen, anyone had the old line single ball from Maryland? I have not. I did see something about it recently though. Yeah. He must, he must, uh, must've heard me, you know, his ear was ringing or whatever they say. My hero's probably got some opinions about this. Is Telex on tonight? He's pretty, I don't know. Um, yeah, he's been taking some time off. You know, we wrapped up kind of our weekly show a little bit yeah, towards the end of last year. He's been taking some time away. Um, he's fine, as far as I know. We still text every once in a while. I've just I haven't talked to him yet. I don't even think this year, maybe just briefly. Um, but he's doing all right. I don't know when he's going to start doing stuff. He had some ideas of some other content he wanted to start posting, but I, I haven't seen much activity either. So uh, your guess is as good as mine. I'm happy to shoot him a text and uh, check it up, check up on him. Though. On the fence of getting the KNL Amroot cast strength Olorosa pick for 150. Ah, oh, man. I don't know. I feel like it would be worth it. The closest thing I've had to a store pick of theirs is the Port Atma, and that, or Atama or Atma. Yeah, that one's really, really good. I know it's not that bad, but when compared to the 2020, it's not that great. Yeah, I agree. I think you're right. You're totally right. You're totally right. I, I, did you have, I mean, you had it, obviously. Like, it, it, it's just a little youthful. I, I don't know. I That part's throwing me off. Look, I know that the whiskey's not that old. These are all NASs, but again, it's India, climate, all of that is playing a role. But I feel like the last two, they did a really good job. This PX, you can't taste the youth in it at all. If there was any youthful notes in the 2020, they were well masked by that virgin oak. This one, yeah, they're just, they're popping. Um, a little bit more, especially on the nose, which was not not uh, uh, the most exciting thing about it. But Zach Andrews is in the house. What up, Zach? How's Texas? Peter White at Mom User. You can review that uh, Irishman's 17th Street. I have not done a review of it. I did taste it. Um, yes, that is a seriously good bottle. I actually have only been able to get one of those. You know who I did think does did a review of that was uh, Mike's or Mike and Dustin um, might have might have reviewed that. Dustin's here; he might be able to tell you. Um, yeah, it is really good. I have tasted it. I should get that out again. Tennessee's in the house. What up, Stephen Connor? How you doing, buddy? Any luck on finding that Kalila Twenty Four? I saw your post on it on the in the, uh, the social media group. I I checked a couple spots that I thought would have it still, but you know they were sold out. They just did a 175th anniversary release from Kalila. It's a 24-year-old, 53.7% uh, ABV. So I'm like, a rare uh, uh, release from them that I I was clamoring over, too. I'd love to get my hands on it. So, you know, I, I haven't found that their, uh, their distillery releases to be particularly spectacular, but um, that one probably is an exception. What else is going on? Folks saying hi to each other. Yeah, cheers to you too, sir. Try the Nirvana. You'll be disappointed for sure. Okay, yeah, I've not done the PJ Nirvana. The one that I recommend is the Brilliance. If folks, I want to recommend the Brilliance and the Bold. Uh, if folks like for the entry level Paul John stuff, and of course the Christmas editions. Right, folks, doing a little crosstalk, chat it up. He did review it and he loved it. Yeah. You're talking about the Irishman? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I, I was tipped off by it by Anthony and um, uh, one of the guys that tunes in on the regular when I was living in Philly and it was at a government store in Philly. <laughs> like or like right outside Philly. It was in there. I also they also had a Turconnell 16 Muscatel, which I have Oloroso Muscatel finish. I'm gonna get into 
yeah, they just they had one of each. And I was like, shit, I'm gonna grab this for sure. We got 21 folks in, which is rad, man. It's great to see you guys. 22. Yeah, I saw that too, man. I I wasn't gonna bite, but I saw Stephen uh, uh, Connor had posted about it, looking for it, and um, I had seen it a few days prior, and I was like, oh shit. And so I checked a couple places, but yeah, I, I haven't seen it. I even was at Benny's today. Because of course I'm a degenerate. Of course I was at Benny's, and they didn't have any. <laughs> they said they had two bottles of it, or we're going to get to, but uh, yeah, no, no luck. I agree. 2021 is not that Christmas. <laughs> no, it's it's not. It's it's a little. And I love Marsala. It it has a very Marsala thing going on. Um, I am going to pour some more of it and sip it on again. I, my prelim on this is three two five, slightly above average. The, the youthfulness on the nose is kind of throwing it off. It does redeem itself with some nice cast um, quality. I do think they use really nice, good casks on their stuff. Yeah, it's, see, there it is. It's still there. Man. Yeah. I'm going to have to let this thing sit out for a while and uh, and see where it goes. But, you know, not everything can be a winner, I guess. Stephen Connor and Malmuser, a buddy locally, bought two from Whiskey International. Okay, great. Oh, excellent. Good, man. That's awesome. Pittsburgh's in the house. Whiskey Ace, what up? How you doing? Uh, we're doing some Paul John Christmas Edition 2021 over here. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Gary's here. San Francisco Bay Area. What's up, brother? Just got the 12... Oh, Marsala Kalila. That sounds fantastic. Bought one of those Irishman 17s, also on the account from Temple's Review. Looking for it. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Fuck, maybe we should have a gem of that tonight. I do think I opened it. Yeah, I'm, I'm good at that 325. It's just a little young. Well, I should rephrase it. The youth is showing because I think they're all probably a little bit on the young side. Not sure about this, but have you heard some people say that the whiskey improves a bit with time? You should let it sit for a while. Yes, I agree. Oxidiz oxygen is key. It breaks it down, allows it to open up a little bit. No doubt. I mean, I got a whole bottle, so whether I like it or not, it's going to oxidize. <laughs> so we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm not going to post a full review of it until I have a clear sense of it. But right now, I again, I, there's, a, there's a lot to like here, but there's, there's some drawbacks, com especially compared to the excellent 2020 Christmas edition from Paul John. Yeah, you too, homie. Always good to have you in the house. Hope everything's well in Pittsburgh. Let me grab that Irishman. Uh, yeah. So this was a, uh, yeah, again, it's a, it's a single cask, 17 years old. Uh, first fill sherry. 56% ABV. I think I got it. Yeah, I definitely got into it. Oh, yeah, I was drinking some of this. It's weird that I don't remember when. It's probably been a while. I think I opened it on a live at one point. But, yeah, I haven't got back into it. I still have a decent amount. Yeah, why don't we pour a little bit of this? We'll get into it. We'll do a little taste of that again. Good stuff. So yeah, just to, again to remind folks, tomorrow I will put uh, bracket two of the uh, blind rye tasting will open. There's another another five of the twenty whiskeys. I I have to tell you, it's pretty funny. The whiskey that ends up winning that blind tasting uh, is surprised me, but it's also going to it'll get a good uh, it'll get a good smile out of most of y'all. <laughs> uh, but the one tomorrow. Yeah, you guys should enjoy it. And I'll, I'll try and get these out relatively quickly so folks can uh, uh, kind of follow them. It should be fun. All right. Let me, um, let me get things adjusted here. So we're going to do this Irishman. They did 606 bottles of it. 
17 years old, 56 year, 56% Sherry. Again, I found this at a government store in the suburbs of Philadelphia. Um, fantastic stuff. No chill filtering. I have not had anything else by um, releases from Irishman, so I can't really speak to it. I, I had this at a tasting. I did a little cigar thing with Tony from King of Prussia, who I'm not sure if he's in or not. Uh, Patreon supporter of the channel. Tony's good people. He had this and told me that they still had it at some at one of the government shops just down the street from him. So on my way home, I made a pit stop and lo and behold, there it was. At a, not a bad price. I think it was like $110, $120 for a single cast 17-year-old whiskey. That's not a complaint. Cohen. That stuff is fantastic. Wow, 83? That's incredible. They have the new one here. I have a bottle of the 2020. They have the 2021 Hampton Rum uh, Great House for 95 over at a uh, local shop over here. I'm it's on the list. I gotta get I'll get to it eventually, but I have a couple nice uh whiskeys coming my way that I'll tell you I'll show you guys next week. <sighs> At Mount Muser. Um it's 56. I mean again if... I don't remember, and we're going to find it right now, how I compared this to like the Red Breast 12 cast rank, which is, of course, I think with the price, just like the best Irish whiskey you can get for value. I mean, it's not as good as the 21. Speaking of, for those of you who are Irish whiskey fans, my review dropping this week will be Red Breast 15 years old. That'll drop Friday for folks. If you are a Patreon supporter, of course, check your email inbox because it's already there. Uh, really good stuff. I haven't really had a red breast I didn't like. I've just had some that I thought were slightly underwhelming. The USA small batch, for example. And I'm seeing this non-age statement PX small batch around for like $110, which I'm not jumping to buy. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has had this or seen this for that matter, but there's a PX. It's like one of these uh, Iberian series um, releases from them. I'm, they're popping up around Chicago. So I'm, I'm happy to take people's advice if, if anybody's had it and think it's worth it. Otherwise, I, I've kind of stayed away from it. I'm on the precipice of uh, uh, pulling the trigger on, on a uh, Red Breast 27, thanks to uh, some generous support from folks on the channel. So that one is in the works. Hopefully at some point in time this year, I will have it. Um, but this PX one, you know, I, it got my attention, but I just, I don't know. I didn't pull the trigger. So curious if anybody's had it. I'll translate that for you. I, for a second, I thought you were talking about Evander Holyfield. <laughs> no, I agree. It's unbelievable. Uh, I'm going to send a sample of that to, to Food Quick, actually, because he was into it. Gary, you know what's up. Have you had the 2021? How does it compare? I got you, homie. Yeah, and it's like 60% ABV. I just got a new uh, a rum, by the way. Um I have been really into those plantation single casks. Those are fantastic. But I, I got the four square indelible, uh, which is like 11 year old bourbon cask and Zinfandel cask. It's pretty damn good. Um, Cohen, I think you emailed me about a place selling it really cheap by you. If you want to share that with folks, if they can get it shipped, if they're in uh, rum, they should do it. Okay. So. We're going to dive in again to this. Um, some folks mentioned it. The Irishman, 17 years old, single cask, uh, 600 some bottles of it. I was very lucky to get this top uh, shelf Dustin 
and Mike um, from Mike's. I'm sorry, I keep saying Mike's Wood Series. Top Shelf Whiskey. If you have not seen it, they have a review of this. Go check it out. Um, this might be a whiskey worth hunting down if you have the opportunity to find it. And there's a couple folks here who have a bottle or two. Um, that'll be worth getting it for sure. You haven't tried it yet either. I haven't, um, but I don't know if Cohen's here, but Cohen, if you're still here, do you have top line thoughts on the 2021 Great House? Oh, I would buy that for sure. You don't see those anymore. That's good stuff. You're not, are you talking about the rum? I'm assuming you're talking about something else. Right on. Okay. Irishman. The thing I was worried about with this has not come to pass. My concern was that at 17 years, that unmistakable, bready, grainy spice that you get from the unmalted barley and Irish whiskey would have been kind of, you know, aged out of it a little bit. That is not the case. It's right here. Oh, man. That's fantastic. So my immediate comparison is with the red breast 12 cast strength. And what I will say is, of course, this is more sherry than that, but also it, yeah, the, the age difference is unmistakable, much more rounded. Lots of that nice Irish unmelted barley pot still spice, tons of sherry, vanilla. It's fresh sherry too. Even at 17 years is like, it's, it's got this, um, There's a freshness to the sherry. It doesn't taste like old, old sherry or anything like that, which is really nice. <sighs> a ton of vanilla, a little bit of that grape plum kind of thing happening in the background. <sighs> Sweet fruit. It's way on that end. But that nice back end body of the unmalted barley is just killer. Like shortbread cookie, like a uh, slightly Cin like cinnamon sugar a little bit too oh yeah that's killer let's go for taste mm. super rich full flavored the best part about this whiskey is that it's not it's not the sherry is not overpowering the character of it. You still get some of that distillate note in here, which the barley, which is what I think is really keeping this thing where, you know, in, in, in small company in terms of just great Irish whiskeys I've ever had. Super rich. We're talking like Adjador sherry, sherry bomb rich, but you got that nice, green, fresh barley note, unmalted barley. These vanillas, a little bit tannic, but sweeter. You get a nice spice hit at the end. The finish is a little bit abrupt. The finish is maybe the only thing I can criticize on this. Like you would like to expect a little bit more, but again, my palate just might be a little tight, a little bit off right now. Um, this is fantastic stuff, um, no doubt about it. I mean, well above a four on my scale. This is in that four two five four four five range, which is what in that I don't know for hundred scale people. This is in that ninety high uh, ninety two range. It's that good. It has weird weird uh, comparisons to Cavalan Oloroso to me. It just has more barley character. I guess I'd just like to see this finish. The finish was kind of abrupt. The back end of the palate, it just kind of stopped. And then it's, you have just like slightly dry fruit notes, a little bit of that Christmas spice, some clove, some nutmeg, a little allspice, kind of, kind of chalky a little bit. 
pop in little cherry plum grape notes here and there, but um, a little more muted than I would expect. Let's see what it tastes. And Winston the Whiskey Cat's made an appearance. Come here, buddy. Uh, we've yet to find a whiskey that can meet Whiskey Winston's standards. How about the Irishman 17? Nope. Still haven't found one. What a nose, though. Holy shit. God, there's like an herbal, there's like this other dimension to it that you don't get on a red breast 12 cast ring. This like herb, herbal, slight herbaceous note. Wow. It's almost like, like sweet basil, as weird as that sounds. Oh, man. <laughs> what a whiskey huge arrival it's just that the drop off towards the finish is like but it's again minor this is easily a 425 4.5 whiskey no doubt about it I would probably take this over I mean, I would take this over any of the, the the most recent Red Breast 12 cast drinks I've had for sure. I mean, it's not quite as sophisticated as the Red Breast 21. Uh, but again, I mean, this is a very unique whiskey. I love it. Fantastic stuff. Peter White, uh, Top Shelf Dustin for the folks. Yeah, this is a, this is great. This is just great. I mean, there's no other, there's no other way to put it. I would easily pay $150 for a whiskey like this. I'd probably even go more. I mean, for an, I mean, it's that good. Really tasty stuff. Okay, let me catch up on the chat as we sip along here. Um, we got, okay, we got 17 folks in. Winston, stop. Uh, come here, buddy. How you doing, man? He doesn't like being left out of the whiskey tasting, but he, of course, hates every whiskey. Maybe he's into the Paul John. <laughs> Fucking ch Can't be pleased. The 18, the 2008 is the gem, but the 2007 is right behind it. I think they're both better than the newest one, which is also good. All right. At Malmuser, do you have any plans to go live with Food Quick? Um, we haven't talked. So we, Quick and I, for a couple of years now, we usually do about three lives a year, sometimes four. Um, we have been swapping some samples. I don't remember the last time Quick and I went live. Maybe it was a little bit before Christmas. So probably not for like another month or two. It depends. Um I do like to, uh, we always have a good time. I'll be checking in. I'll keep folks updated on that. Um, happy to check in with them. I saw that food quick meme you posted on your Insta story. I think he has become famous now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So some, uh, this is really funny. So some um, Instagram page, you know, like one of these pages that just posts funny stuff on the internet, posted a picture of uh, of Quig from the, from the LaFrog 10 video. And it said, I once watched a guy uh, I review a scotch whiskey while his girlfriend left him in the background absolute legend and you know millions you know hundreds of thousands of people were liking it or whatever and i shared it on my story i was like i know that dude yeah he's dude everybody knows the quick he'll probably get another bump i mean that video is the most watched whiskey review video on youtube for sure Top D says uh, Redbreast 12 even still, or 27 even still tastes Irish. That's, yeah, it's awesome. I I have not had it. It is it is one of my, like, you know, North Star whiskeys I have to get my hands on. Because the 21 is just unbelievable. I, the 12 cast strength is unbelievable. The 15 is really good. Again, review of that will drop Friday. The regular 12 is fine. Um, totally solid, probably better than any other 12 year old whiskeys. Maybe the only one that might beat it out would be the Powers Johns Lane, but I, I mean, Redbreast, it's really hard to find a whiskey that they 
don't just knock out of the park. Um, I have not had a bottle of the Lustau. That is the one I've not had a bottle of. And then of course there's all these special releases. When I was over in Paris, there was, they had some like 30 some year old dream cask that was like fucking 600 euros. Um, you know, that's out of my league. Hey man, cheers, buddy. Always good to see you, Alan. If, for some reason, anybody in the stream is not subscribed to the Whiskey Friend. Go check his channel out. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's crazy. Here, so the nose and the finish are off the charts. Great palette, too. Uh, I'm assuming, are you talking about the Redbreast 27? Oh, man. Ooh, I can only imagine. The 21 was unbelievable. What is the most you pay for a bottle of this Irishman 17? Oh, I would easily go 150 on this. I would go probably more. I mean, if you really like Irish whiskey, you know what? You don't even need to really like Irish whiskey. If you appreciate whiskey, this is just class act whiskey. When you think about some of the prices these days, you know, I'm thinking Redbreast 21s are now like in the, I mean, I remember when that was like a 200 like even a year and a half ago now it's in that like 250 range if you can get your hands on this for sub 200 i i almost think it's worth it it's that good it maybe doesn't have a ton of the it doesn't have as much of the complexity and again i've not had enough so maybe i'm wrong in fact let's put a little water on it it's not quite as complex and dynamic as the red breast 12 cast strength in my opinion but what it excels at is just the Incredibly velvety, rich mouthfeel, ton of flavor. It's got so much going on in terms of just the viscosity alone. The delivery, the nose and the arrival are just some of the best you'll ever have, in my opinion. Are you drinking some of it right now? Yeah. Oh, dude, the viscosity on this is unbelievable. I think Whiskey Ace has some too, man. That's amazing. Did you get some at a PA government store too? Shit. Uh, here's Cohen about the Great House. Not quite as good as 2020, but both good. Not buying the New Hampton because of the print. Still one's the way to go. Yeah. Winston. He's about to head over there to his. Uh... Loves the Redbreast 27. It's a lot of passion. Yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on a bottle of that, man. Good stuff, bit overpriced, but now that you can find them closer to 400, you get a lot of the Port Irish. It's on a pad by low 90 score for me right now. Sounds about right. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, he's over there again by uh, keeping an eye on the Laford carcasses, but this isn't going to end well. Yeah, do your thing, man. For sure. Hey, can you not scratch that bottle? You guys want to really see him freak out. Scratch that bottle again, you get the piao piao. Punk ass. The only issue with the Red Breast 27, yeah, it's like $500, right? That's the thing. I'm trying to find one a little bit less. Now, I've had some folks kick in. Um, through Super Chats, which is awesome. Uh, she's not here right now, but she kicked in a bunch last year, which is awesome. So I'm keeping an eye out for it. Right, because it's got the port, right? They've added the port element to it. That's the thing about it. <laughs> Smooth criminal, yeah. Emphasis on the criminal part, man. Man, I had... Yeah, dude, totally. I have a bottle of it on my bar. Absolutely. I you, it's under it's like you can find it sometimes for like twelve thirteen dollars for a bottle of it. It's killer bourbon at that price, absolutely killer. Irishman seventeen third three hundred is you know wow okay, one fifty to two hundred says whiskey ace. Man, I saw that. I got to get my hands on that bottle. I think Gary's got, Gary. You have a bottle of that that. Uh, the Mizanara um, 17 Glendalock. Man, this Irishman is just 
ton of like vanilla um, strawberry. Fresh fruit. Yeah, I'm amazed at how fresh this whiskey is, given its age. This is likely probably because of the first fill nature of it. Because if it wasn't first fill, you'd probably be getting darker notes, uh, more kind of drier uh, sherry notes. Which I wonder if would give a little bit more complexity to it. But again, I don't know. This is nitpicky. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Yeah, that's right. You got one too of the same price. Yeah. Somehow a bunch of uh, PA government stores got their hands on this. Yeah, there's just nothing wrong with this whiskey. I just, yeah, I, I, I think the only thing that would could even accelerate this would just be. I wonder if they went with a refill cask instead of the first fill. The first fill definitely, I think, is. I'd like to see what this would taste like with a little bit more of the distillate showing. Now, I don't actually know who makes Irishman. Is this a Cooley product? Or do they do their own thing? It's not uh, Irish whiskey distillers. Yeah, it's really good. Killer stuff, man. If you can find it, buy it without hesitation. Not the cast strength. Ah, that's lame. Hmm. Um, I'm going to move on from this Irishman, but boy, this is a whiskey that can bring down the house. Again, if you guys want to see a full review of it, top, um, top shelf whiskey channel, which is Mike and dustin are you guys do you, yeah and dustin um uh did a review of this so you can check it out this is not going to be an easy bottle to get your hands on i'm going to tell you right now um i've had this i got this almost a year ago and for folks just joining we're hitting that hour mark we got 21 folks in which is great we uncorked and tasted the brand new paul john christmas edition 2021 Preliminary verdict, eh, could use a little bit more age, I think, or at least something else to mask the youth. A little bit young, which turned me off. Um, it is not nearly as good as the 2020 and uh, rivals the 2019 PX. I, I give this a 325 out of five stars for the uh, uh, preliminary review. I will let this sit open a little bit, but look, a whiskey should be fantastic or not, or out of the out of the gate. Um, I do hope that this mellows a little bit, but you know, not a miss, but not a hit, not a home run either. This hit a you know, this hit a single, and then it's a double on a, on an error. Put it that way. Um, and also, uh, if folks didn't see the one ride to rule them all twenty blind ride challenge is off and running. I have set up uh, premieres for all four of the initial brackets. There's five rye whiskeys I'm tasting blind in each. Bracket one was a couple days ago. Um, you can like and set up a notification if you want to make sure you don't miss the premieres of the next three brackets. Uh, bracket two will drop tomorrow. And then uh, four of them will be in the finals. I'm very excited to share what those are. And again, thank you to Patreon supporters and for folks who sent super chats and for everybody that's viewed and hit the thumbs up and left a comment, man. I appreciate you all very much on that. I think this is the beginning of uh, uh, something I'm going to try to do at least once a year, if not twice. Um, got my eyes on a sherry single malt scotch blind tasting tournament next, um, maybe later this year. So we'll see where that goes. Appreciate you all on that. Um, Gary's got uh, some Redbreast 27 that's already hit. Thirteen's awesome. That was my runner-up for Irish and whiskey last year. I came across a couple single cats, Glengaddies. Anybody know anything about those? I have not had any of them, but 
I know what you're talking about. There's like that 1999 wine cask one or whatever. I feel like they'd be worth it. I, I personally like Glengarry's style. I mean, it's a very heavy dessert like whiskey, a lot of dark, uh, stewed fruit notes. I probably would buy if the price is right. Dude, hell yeah. Which red breast? Uh, I think folks are talking about the 27 in the chat. Blind sherry tastings are tough. They were, yeah, that's the, you know, I, that was also, you hit the nail that. That's the thing I was wondering about with Pete too. It's just, it's just like those flavors are, are so overpowering, but you know, what I might do is just do less of them. So in the rye bracket that I'm doing right, or the rye tasting I'm doing right now, Dustin, uh, you know, I was doing five, five ryes in each. I feel like with a sherry, maybe just do three. You know, like, because otherwise you're not going to be able to, to taste the differences. They're just going to be blending together too much. I mean, you'll notice sweet versus dry, but yeah, it's a good question. And I, and, and if I do it, I want to do it right. I don't want to like bullshit y'all. Like I, I definitely try to do my best to just be honest in who I am. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly, but I, I appreciate what you're saying. I think that's absolutely true, and it's something I have to keep in mind. <laughs> Irishman is triple distilled, so it's possibly Middleton. Okay. Yeah. Got a Glen Gaddy 95, says Peter White, before they retooled. You know, Glen is actually retooling again, and potentially for the better. So they are doing... Um, Glen Gaddy is actually moving to floor maltings at their distillery. So the newer ones that you'll start seeing uh, maybe later this year, if not early next year, they're moving to an in-house floor malting operation, which is rather unique for Scotch whiskeys these days. And there's not many that do that anymore in that, uh, you know, traditional style. Um, but they are going to be doing that. What's it going to mean? I don't know. So grab a Glengarry now and then maybe grab another in a year or two when they've changed it around and, and maybe we'll notice some differences. Great to see you, man. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, glad glad you got to tune in for this, man. I know you and I had chatted a bit on Instagram about this. At Malt Muse, are honestly sure it's 10 times harder for me than Pete. I think you and Talix don't agree with me on the difference in crushing your tongue level. But for me, it's brutal. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, you're probably right. I mean, I see your point. Because the thing about the peat is, is that like the peat flavor, I feel maintains a little bit more of a constantness and you can still get more of the, uh, constantness is not a word, by the way, it is now, uh, but the cast maturations of the other stuff you can pick up more. I, I do feel like with Sherry, it is, it is a bit more of a, it takes center stage, you know, peat sometimes it's like, is it a smoky peat? Is it an effervescent peat? I don't know. That's a really good point. Um, and no, I appreciate your like insight on that because I do think if I do a sherry, you know, blind sherry tasting, the way to approach it will be to to less of them per blind tasting bracket than maybe something else. Um, as for the peak comparison, I don't know. I, I, I kind of find it both, but I, I get logically what you mean. I think that makes a lot of sense. So thanks for showing that, man. I agree. Yeah, the Red Breast 21 is unreal. Fantastic stuff. The 99 is the one I've seen, which is that red wine. I think I would buy it. I've seen it, you know, like 120 bucks or something. I'd buy it. It's like a, you know, 16, 17 year old. If you like the Glengaddy style, I mean, their 12 year old, I still think is one of the best 12 year olds on the market for the price. It's like $65, 48% non chill filtered, very cask driven, rich, heavy whiskey. It is a after dinner whiskey if there is one. It's very dessert like. I I love it. It was in my top five whiskeys of the year, I think, way back in 18. Um, I unfortunately have not had uh, any of these single casks, but. They're a dark horse whiskey, and again, they're they're moving, they're changing up their style. As I mentioned, they're they're moving to floor maltings, which, who knows? Are they? Is this a sign of the times? Are they doing it just for advertising reasons? I don't know, but um, there aren't many distilleries that still do that. I think Balvenie, Lafroig, um, Springbank, not many. And again, you know, 
are these th you know are these things that you can pick up like Tewa? I don't know. And they're making a peated whiskey. Says Cohen. Okay. Glen Gaddy, man, look out. Yeah, they are well pressed. I agree. Sure, that was worked okay, but I think three or four max for me at New York Casting. Beyond that, you miss it. Yeah, okay. I agree with you, man. Good, good point. Thanks, Dustin. That's a really good point. Yeah, I I, I mean, <laughs> and, and and the problem is, is also is like so it's compounded by the fact that so many of them are, are really good. Like you would hate to to burn your palate out on like a, a Glenn Farkless 105 and then a um you know, like a, uh, another, just one of those, any, uh, Aberlar Abuna. And then the third one you taste is like an Allardyce and the Allardyce does taste tame comparatively. And you're like, ah, I think this other one won. You know, you'd be missing all those great subtleties that come from that whiskey. That's a really good point. 98's red wine. 99 is Sherry Cass. Let's be right. Okay, gotcha. How you doing, Winston? Keeping an eye on things over there? Okay, good. Hey, Donner Pass, how you doing? Great to have you back in, bud. Good to see you. We got 23 folks in, which is great. Um, yeah, again, huge praise on this Irishman. This is fantastic. Paul John could use a little bit of work. We'll see where it goes. Um, I'm definitely... So I'll give folks a little bit of a heads up. As I mentioned, you know, the, the distilleries that I've been really thinking about a lot going into this year, this Brook Lottie, some world whiskey stuff. I have I have some excellent world whiskeys coming my way. Um a couple of Fukanos, which are some rice whiskeys from Japan. Um, I have a uh, some Amrit Spectrums coming my way. We'll be trying those out uh, and a couple others. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, so if you're into world whiskey, I'll be, I'll be trying to do more reviews of those as we head into uh, deeper into the year. The MRCO one is really good. The MCO one is also really good. Marsala. The MRC is the right wine, I think. I haven't had the Glen going 30. I've had the 25. It's fantastic. All right. Uh, let me just take a brief moment, and I'll be right back, and we will uh, have another whiskey. All right. Sorry about this, y'all. Um, so I was just thinking, you know, with with the similarities with this Paul John in terms of how I felt like it was kind of giving me a Marsala note, I think we're going to revisit a whiskey I opened eh, maybe two months ago. I mean, would love to hear folks' thoughts on this distillery or just, you know, this whiskey in general if you've had it. So this is a Le Chag. Um, this is a uh, distillery exclusive uh, Ink Distillery Exclusive. This is a 2008 Marsala finish. So I believe this is a 12 or 13 year whiskey, non chill filtered, 58.1%. Um, I'm a big fan of Le Chag. And thinking a nice, heavily peated, moderately peated whiskey with Marsala. It's one of my favorite things, all in one. Uh, this should be tasty. It has been a minute since I've had a sample of this. Again, here's the bottle. If folks want to take a look. Ooh. Can't go wrong with a good little chag, right? All right, let's get back into it. Hey, Michael Besley, dude, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. That's very, very kind. Thank you for the super chat. Um, man, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, definitely will uh, keep folks posted as I start pulling that together. Um, I've learned a lot from doing the rye thing, um, which was a lot of fun. Again, I, I really, really enjoyed it and want to thank folks for that again. So, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Thanks so much for the support, buddy. 
Good on you, bro. All right, what else is going on here? Yeah, dude, he does. <laughs> Did I ever tell you? So, funny story about the... Oh, he's gone. <laughs> dude, I was about to praise you, you stupid cat. So, uh, I posted a picture of, of him, like, you know, guarding the, the carcasses on Instagram, and Lefroy actually, like, responded to the picture and was like, hey, can we use this potentially in some of our marketing or something? I was like, yeah, fuck do I care? Uh, I don't know if they ever did. They didn't respond to me. They just said, like, respond yes if you're okay with us using this. And so I don't know if they ever did. But it was pretty funny. I was hoping I could get a, bottle, uh, a good picture of it. <laughs> He's, he definitely thinks he is. Doing the final things in May in Ireland, London, Scotland for two years. I can't believe it. Oh, man. That's going to be awesome, Pete. Uh, Tim, I'm really you're gonna have to keep us posted on how your trip goes, man. That's fantastic. I've been to the UK many times and yet have not. Scotland's the only place I haven't been, so I'm like, I gotta go back one more time at least once. Um, hopefully, sooner than later, maybe 2023. I hope that they, um, I hope I get the opportunity to like to do it. I, I would, you know. Okay, so this will be a fun question for all of y'all in the chat. You got five distilleries you can visit on a on a three four day trip to Scotland. What are your top five distilleries? Do you have a top five? Or do you even have a top three? I can tell you what mine are. But first, feel free to drop it in the chat. I would love to hear it. What are your five dream distillery visits? I am going to uh, I'm going to give myself a bit of this uh, Lecheg or Solacast cast strength distillery bottle. I love Lecheg's peat. It's earthy. It's sharp, but it is not overpowering. So much delicious Marsala, the ripe oranges, the raisin notes. Freaking awesome. <laughs> Gary. Oh, this is this has gotten even better. Oh fuck. It's sharp. It's still intense. It's still a little edgy, but my god. Those rich fruit notes in this, the caramel, the chocolate, the like marzipan. Oh, this is just fantastic stuff. I think this is going to be included. So for folks who are supporters on Patreon, well, for people who follow the channel, job, usually about three times a year, sometimes four, I will, uh, I'll do a raffle for Patreon supporters where I'll um, send samples of random whiskeys to folks. I think this little check is going to be in it. So that's the first. That's the first whiskey that's going to be included. Last year we did, I think the winner got four samples and the second or the third one we did last year. So if you are a supporter on Patreon, this little check is coming your way. Um, it is really, really, really good. And it is just getting better. I, I think the only thing that could change this is age. It is, I think, just 13 years old or 12. Yeah, fill date was 2020. Yeah, this is 12. Just a little bit more age on it would be awesome. I'm making my first trip to Kentucky in April to do the trail. Any recommendations? Oh, that's great, man. Yes, I do have recommendations. Um, so first of all, don't waste your time running around trying to find rare bottles in liquor stores around Kentucky. You won't find shit. Um, I can tell you that from experience. Secondly, um, I would highly recommend you do Will It. If you show up on the right day and you don't know if it's going to be the right day or not, they'll have some of their like unicorn bottles out for sale in the shop. But even if they don't, great distillery. They have a cat there that lives in the distillery. It's a wonderful kind of small time mom and pop type operation there that you'll really, really enjoy. Check out Will It. Um, I would also recommend Wild Turkey. 
I would also recommend Buffalo trays. Uh, those were just fantastic. You can, the other ones that I did those three for sure. Now Buffalo trace is actually a bit off the beaten path. You got to drive for a while. So make sure you plan accordingly. Um, it's not in Bardstown. It's not in Louisville or anything like that. You can avoid Old Forester as much as they're not going to have birthday bourbons. They won't. And honestly, it's uh, unless you're like hanging out in Louisville, you can pass on it. Same with Michter's, which isn't even a distillery. It's just a Michter's still house bar. Um, Four Roses, they will have some barrel pick bottles in their shop, but they're not going to be that rare or anything. Still worth checking out. Um, but Buffalo Trace, I think, in terms of just the history and the the quality of the tour, if you're going to do tours, Buffalo Trace is second to none. Um, Wild Turkey's right behind it. I would recommend both of those. Will it third for sure? Consider Four Roses. You can avoid Woodford unless you really want. I mean, it's a beautiful area. It's out in this just like rolling hills. Uh, horse farm thing if you really want to go check it out you can but they don't got jack for whiskeys to taste um so you can avoid that um heaven hills fine uh that one wasn't all that spectacular jim beam yeah check out beam i mean it's beam go check out beam and it's it's like right in the middle it's like you're you almost have to go past beam to go anywhere consider it um Rabbit Hole, I would recommend if you can. They're right outside Louisville. Um, what other ones did we do? Yeah, you know, you can avoid Old Forester. You can, and again, if you're not, you know, posting up in Louisville, you don't need to do the whiskey row stuff. Really, it's it's not that interesting. You're, you know, if you go down to Bardstown, though. Um, on the way there, you're going to, I think you go by Four Roses, check it out. But top of the list, Willet and Buffalo Trace, I think are the two that I would highly most recommend. And then Wild Turkey as well. Uh, but definitely if other folks have ideas, check it out. Uh, top Show Dustin, Springbank, Lagavulin, Aaron, Balvany, and I'm just going back to Springbank. Excellent choices. Springbank for sure. Springbank, Lecheg, Highland Park. Love it. Springbank, Bunahaven for starters. Lafroy. Top three for Daniel, Ben Nevis, Kalila, Springbank, Independent Bottlers. Winston is just going to get more whiskey famous now, maybe LaFroy. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, we'll see. Hey, appreciate that, man. Yeah, thank you, guys. Love the support. Thanks so much, man. Um, always good. I, love, I do love me some Tuesdays. Yeah, right? It was super rad of him. Told you LaFruit is pixie son. I hope so. I mean, I fuck, dude. They can brand it with the cat, you know. I, I do want to be independent and all this, but if LaFroig wants to use my Russian blue maniac cat as a as a advertising tool, man, and it's equal opportunity. Oh, you're talking about the Lechek. Not sure if you can, but I would love to visit our mature Torvag, yeah. Anok. Okay, Cohen says wild turkey and four roses for you. Yeah, I agree. Seems so, luckily that I've done a few Talisker, Ardbeg, Lafroy, Lagavulin, Springbank, Brookladi, Kilholman, and of course been through Southern Parts again. Nice. He says hit up Barton, Willet, Heaven Hill, Four Roses, Barrel House, and Gene Beam are all pretty close together. Yeah, that's right. Buffalo Trace, Turkey, and Heaven Hill are pretty nice places to hang out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Buffalo Trace is just an Buffalo Trace is like the, the ultimate bourbon distillery experience. It really is. Um, you do get to taste some stuff. I mean, they're not again, none of these places are gonna have rare bottles. And again, you're gonna waste your time if you spend your time running around going to liquor stores. You're just not gonna find anything really. At least that I could find, and I did a pretty extensive search. But yeah, I completely agree with like Dustin's sentiments here, and and um, whiskey ace and stuff. I mean, yeah, turkey buffalo trips are just they're really good experiences, and you will not be disappointed. And and will it too is a dark horse for sure. 
really want to go to Glendronic and some of the Highland distilleries in the northern part of the country. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done Maker's Mark. You know, another one that I, I and I haven't been there, it's a very new place, but it looks really nice, is New Riff. Yeah, if you're down in Bardstown, if you if you go to Bardstown, first of all, there's a lot of weird history in Bardstown and in some of the surrounding towns, like weird murder mystery stuff. Check it out. Uh, you won't. You, you could definitely go down the rabbit hole with some of that. But if you're down there, um, you know Heaven Hill and Willet are right in that area. They check them out for sure. There you go. Leo's is, uh, makers is worth the visit. That's good to know. All right, all right. We got some great, great yes to Balvany. Balvany is another I want to visit. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the five that I would make sure that I would visit for sure. I mean, number one is going to be Lafroig. Only because I want to go stand on my fucking plot of land. Yeah, I know that's I know that's corny and basic, but I'm not gonna front. I want to I want to go be on my plot of land. I want to put my dumb flag. I want my Instagram picture on my plot of land at Lafroy. God damn it. <laughs> Plus, Lafroy has just like been one of those series, while not my favorite anymore on uh, Nyla, it has just been a, a such a, it's been a whiskey that's just done, came apart, came about it so many times in my journey that I just, ha I would have to do it. That would be one. Brook Lottie would be two, just because I, I am just fascinated by the innovative style of Brook Lottie. I'd love to taste. I'm sure that they have some interesting stuff to taste at their distillery for sure. Third, although it would be near impossible to probably get to because it's so off the beaten path. And it's a, it's a distillery that I definitely have criticisms about of late would be Highland Park. I would just love to go up to the islands, uh, you know, check out Highland Park and, you know, see what kind of weird stuff they got there. I love classic, just good age stated, solid Highland Parks. Like I just love them. I was given a sample by of a really old one. The oldest one that I've ever owned is a 21 year old. Um, but I got a really old one sent to me by Mike from Mike's whiskey or from Top Shelf Whiskey um, of like an older 25 that was just unbelievable. I, I There's a lot to criticize about Highland Park, but man, they have such, like their core style is just so freaking good. It would be really hard for me to not want to 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 go there without going to Highland Park. So that would be three. Four would be Balvenie, um, for a lot of the reasons folks are mentioning. Just love Balvenie, love their their style, their character. They do some of these things the old style. They are right across the street from Glenfiddich. Where is it? Glenlivet. Glenfiddich, I believe. Yeah. Um, Balvenie is just awesome. Floor maltings, the whole thing, and then five. Come on, Springbank. I mean, any trip to Scotland without a stop at Springbank to me would be a, a trip not maximized. So, yeah, those would be my five. Uh, Laphroaig, Brook Lottie, Highland Park, Balvenie, and Springbank. But shit. Hopefully you can go long enough where you're only not going to five. Ben Nevis would be awesome. Dude, right? Buffalo Trace and Jim Beam seem to have the most present angel share in the air, but that probably depends on the weather. My dad visited Maker's Mark. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. I mean, so a little bit of backstory. So I, I did the bourbon trail um, for my stepdad's 70th birthday. He always wanted to do this. And, man, it was such a special experience. And that's the thing, right? Like, even if you can just you know, first whiskey heads. And this was something I struggled with while I was on the bourbon trail. It's like, you just want to hunt for those rare bottles, right? You're in Kentucky. This is where it happens. You want to find those bottles, you know, man, like I feel like there were times where that took a little bit away from me, just like being present in the moment and just really enjoying the history and the beauty of it all. I had a lot of that, but I, I do feel there were times where I was just like on the hunt for bottles. So I would really recommend. Yeah. You know, it's things like this. It's like what what IC86 just said. 
my stepdad got a got a photo with um the guy who did the tour for us he was like one of the really famous guys at buffalo trace that does the tours god i wish i could remember his name he was in like a whiskey magazine or whatever we got a picture with him we bought a he bought a, a weller barrel from them so he's like set up a little bar in his in his house for his you know he's got a dozen or so whiskeys that he sets up on his bar and it's just a real special thing um those are the things that are just so amazing about it and you know so the buffalo choice experience really left a mark on me they kind of went above and beyond they were really really um just super nice people it, it didn't feel corporatized at all despite obviously buffalo trace is you know huge um similar with turkey i mean they're, they're you're just you want to you know and will it by far will it was just such a you really felt like you were like you know, there's not a ton of people that will, you know, like uh, doing the tour, you know, you're not in a group of like 50 you're in a group of like 15. And you really just get to see the guts of it all, the inner workings of it, really, really great experiences. And again, you can really appreciate the uh, unsanitized nature of, of places like Willet. Um, conversely, you know, what I wouldn't recommend is, is uh, Woodford. It's beautiful, it's opulent, but it's, it's, it's like you're at a rich country golf club, country club golf club kind of place. It's nice, but it doesn't have that same, you know, down to earth vibe. Um, so yeah, I would really encourage that. You know, obviously you hunt for a few bottles here and there, but I, I, I would, if you, I would really just try to be present because it, it's an amazing experience. Oh, that's good to know. I didn't know that. No, I've not, but dude, come on, man. That's got to be amazing. Seagrass is so good. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I'd like to check it out. They've been doing some fun stuff with their whiskey. Yeah, they've been doing all sorts. They did like a peated whiskey, too, but. Oh man, anyway, this Lechag is killer. Hell yeah, Freud. Yeah, oh, for sure, right? I mean, you're going to have to, you know, you got to take a ferry over there. Plus, you got to go all the way into the north. I mean, if you're going to go up that way, you might as well go to Glenmorangie and, and Old Pulteney or Wolfburg. They're all up in that area. You probably have to, eat. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I do. I think I have over 30 Lefroigs. I got a lot of backups of a lot of Lefroigs. Um Yeah, man. I would love to do that. That would just be so cool. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you on that. Philly Bettini's been this. Unfortunately, Will, it will be closed the days in there. And Four Roses is not currently offering tours. They haven't held book trade. Okay, good. Yeah, see if you can do uh, turkey. Um, definitely look for wild turkey, but Buffalo Trace, yes, for sure. It's worth the drive. It's in Frankfurt or whatever the hell. I don't know. It's worth it. Go for it. You will not be disappointed. Spent five days in Campbelltown. Fantastic. Oh, man. I'm jealous. So I bought a small local shop's Buffalo Trace store pick today. Just opened it. This is the most caramel heavy butch I've ever tasted. Nice. I have a, I got a Binnie's. Binnie's a big, it's a local chain store here in Chicago. Uh, I have a Binnie's uh, Buffalo Trace pick. Really solid. Oh, no kidding. I remember that. Do it. I mean, it's bean, man. You know, whatever. So the one cool thing, let me see if I can actually, is it easily accessible? It is. Ah, here it is. Okay. Now, it was a little bit overpriced. So there's no doubt about that. But at Wild Turkey, they did have a couple picks. They had some, some, uh, some rye picks. I think it was rye picks. I don't know, but I got this. It's dusty. So it is the new labeling, which is shit. But 
Now they were like ninety dollars, so it's more than you should ever pay for, or eighty five dollars is more than you should ever pay for this. But it is a bottle pick by Eddie Russell, so or it's a barrel pick of Eddie Russell. It's a wild turkey single barrel Eddie Russell pick. I have not opened it yet. Um, you know, I had to come back with something. You know what I'm saying? Why not an Eddie Russell single barrel Kentucky uh, Kentucky Spirit pick, fifty point five percent ABV. Yeah, this is about how back in 19 it's been. God, it's been some years. But yeah, I did get an Eddie Russell pick. So they had a couple of those in the gift shop for a hefty price. But, you know, you're on vacation. You got to get something, right? Oh, all right. I feel you, man. I'm picking up what you're throwing down here, D. Good to have your email, though. Um, we can talk about some swaps at some point in time. I have a bottle of that. It's really good stuff. From what I remember. I'm sorry I'm so far behind on the chat, you guys. Uh, Cohen says, I would go to three distilleries in Campbelltown because you can walk to all three. Yeah, Glen Gyle and uh, Scotia and them, you know, Springbank. Good shit, y'all. All right, we still got 22 folks in, so I'm going to keep going. Fuck. Um, what are we at here? What, am, what is this? That's the Lechag. What is this? Oh, this is the Paul John. God, it's good. It's just not good enough. Whiskey kind of pisses me off. We'll see where it goes. Anyways, um, talking all this bourbon, it's got fuck. I don't know. I should do one more drink here. Um, should we revisit the Dalmore cigar malt from last week? Kidding, 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 kidding. We're not going to do that. That needs to sit for a while and be forgotten. <laughs> Um, um, okay, let's check this out. Actually, you know what? Best of both worlds. So what we're going to close the house with tonight, this is a Adelphi independent bottling selection. Um, Kalila, 12 year old. Uh, all first fill Oloroso Sherry Hogshead, as you can tell by the incredible color on this. This is bottled at a 53% ABV. A nice Sherry Kalila. So as we were talking about earlier, let's let's use peat and Sherry to destroy the palate. Hmm. <coughs> that is good. Look for the Russell's 13th in the distillery. It would be great to find it. 2019 is great. Are you talking about the Eddie Russell pick? <laughs> yeah. I want the Tamdu cigar blend, but I'm not in love with the press. I have a bottle of that uh, up there. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm thinking about doing a comparison video between that and the <laughs> the one that we did, the mystery bottle from last week, the Dalmore cigar mode. Um, my whiskey of the year was Tamdu Batch Strength Number Five. If anybody has not had that yet, I highly recommend you get it. But I I love Tamdu, so I'm very excited for that cigar malt when uh, when we get into it. Hey, James Morgan's in the house. What up, London? It's getting a little late for you, brother. Hope you got off tomorrow. Good to see you, man. Yeah, this will be. I love indie Kalilas. I have a, I think this is a Gordon McPhail discovery, but I have these Adelphi one is just fantastic. I have a bunch of their fee seals too, which I've gotten really lucky to get my hands on. Oh, man. This is just so good. Absolute killer. All this bourbon talks got me thirsty and part of the Parker's Heavy Char Bourbon. The flavor development is pretty good. Oh, fuck. Parker's Heavy Char 
Parkers, huh? You, my friend, I have had one Parkers in my life, and that was the Parkers Heritage. It was those Caraco ones, the orange ones, which are like the easiest to get, I guess. My brother had a bottle. It's quite good, but not uh, not worth the price. That I can't even imagine, bro. You're making me want a bourbon too. I did just pick up an old standby. Um, if you saw on Instagram, I just got a, a, a barrel pick, uh, Knob Creek single barrel. I love those Knob Creek single barrels, but it ain't like it used to be years ago. You used to find those Knob Creek single barrels. You get like 13 year old, 14 year old, fuck 15 year olds for like $50. Now, when you see the barrel picks they are all like nine and a half, 10 years at the most. I have a bunch of old ones, dusty, uh, 15 year old and a 13 year old single barrels, I think like old labels from back in like 2017. But I grabbed a, a 29, uh, a, a, a nine and a half year from a local shop here. And it's just great. Still, I know the prices went up a little bit. I think they're like $50, $55 a, a pop now for the Knob Creek single barrel. But I still think bang for your buck, man, 60% ADV, nine year age statement minimum. They're just killer. They're just killer. They just, they're classic bourbon, amped up with a lot of flavor and they just do not disappoint so i always like to have one around great man it's great to have you here james good to see you i'd love to see that parker's for less than 300 here man yeah dude i'm talking about parker's heritage who are they who even distills that stuff i don't even know that's outside my realm of knowledge No. Well, the barrel picks aren't bad. So I was at a shop. It's a, it's a little local shop here in Chicago called Garfields. And uh, the guy was like, I was like, hey, you guys got two knob knob picks. And he's like, yeah. He's like, if you want one, let me know. <laughs> I'll show you which one to get. One barrel is way better than the other. And there was one left. So I uh, I apparently got the, the good barrel. It is quite good. I enjoyed it. I got a Parker's 50th anniversary that I bought retail a few years ago. Never opened. Now it's just too expensive to open. Yeah, that's what happens. Ah, they're Heaven Hill. Okay, got it. Oh man, this is Delphi Kalula. Thing I love about it, it's like the peat's there, but it's fresh peat. Very light. It's not that medicinal note. It's not earthy like Ardbeg. Just a very fresh, kind of like a Kilhomany. And then you got this nice sherry, but it's a nice fresh sherry too. It's not too aged. It's working really well together. Again, first fill. So the freshness, the, the sweeter sherry, not the drier for drier notes. Look at the color of this. Man, there's just nothing wrong with that whiskey. Perfectly balanced. Peat, citric, vanilla, fresh sherry. Man, that's killer. <sighs> yeah. Uh, the Ben Nevis is somewhere up. I know, I got to do this one. So I have a couple Ben Nevis bottles and i think i'm going to do them all in one show i do have an adelphi this is a five-year bed nevis uh also first fill sherry i believe yep a little color comparison here Ooh this is the kalila this is the ben nevis clue is maybe just a, a hair darker i'm going to do this i also have a seven-year-old signatory and a 21 year old Ben Nevis. I think I'm going to do them all in like one big Ben Nevis tasting and the standard 10. So we'll, we'll do them all at once. Yeah. So I'm going to sit on this one for just a little bit longer, bro. You, did you get a bottle of this Cohen? I thought, I feel like you mentioned that you did. If you did, I'd love to hear what your initial thoughts are, but yeah, I think I'm going to do these all. I'm going to do just kind of a Ben Nevis tasting show, I think with the 21 and then these, uh, 
you know, this one and the, the signatory uh, seven. Oh, great. Okay, so that's the same one. Awesome. Good to hear. Glad to hear it. Dude, they have fallen by the wayside. I mean, I remember you used to be able to go in stores and find those, and you can't find those anymore. The Four Roses, forget it. It's too bad. I have I have two left. I have an OBSQ 12-year like store pick, which is probably the best one. But again, it's not that, you know, everybody's chasing the, everybody wants the high corn. I like the high rye. Oh, we could arrange that for sure. That was you. Excellent. Yes, 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 yes. Great. Yeah, we could definitely arrange that, Stephen. Um, we'll look at that in a couple weeks. I think next week, I'm not sure yet. I have a couple things I, I have lined up I haven't chose yet, but we could definitely do a Ben Nevis night. It would be fun to have a couple folks on and join the, sh join the, uh, join the stream for that. Um, yeah, the Adelphi, I have a 21-year-old Ben Nevis. We could do a bunch of those. That would be awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah, the private slicks that I even have. So I have uh, I have a, this is a nine-year, seven-month OESK. And then this is the old one. Which again, God, I wish you could find these anymore. So, God, look at the dust. This is a 11 year, three month OBSQ bottled in 2019. But shit, dude, you're, you know, they're so impossible to find out. I remember, I remember I used to be able to order those online. There was a store in Jersey called uh, Bourbon Scotch Beer that would have like four or five different picks up and they'd all be like 75, 80 bucks. And you could just, I mean, nobody was drinking them. And now it's like fucking impossible. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. I really enjoy it. All right, y'all. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I appreciate everybody for hanging out tonight. As usual, again, tomorrow, bracket two of the one ride or rule them all 20 blind ride challenge will drop. Whiskey review dropping Friday is uh, Redbreast 15. If you are a fan of, uh, or if you're on Patreon, you've already got in your email box. So feel free to check that out. Um, again, for those of you who are in the line of some storms or dealing with storms that have just come through, I hope everybody stays safe. And uh, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this dram and make myself some dinner on the late night tip. Great tasty Tuesday, y'all. Much love to everybody. Stay safe, be well. Catch you next time.